Hello folks, hello Kev Stratton Invitational, it's game week Drrr, two and what a wonderful game week it was, slight stark contrast to game week one's dizzy heights, is this the way the season's going to go, is it going to be Haaland one week and then the next week's, Ooh, who knows, let's take a look what happened this week and as we can see in the tables and I will include the tables of course, we have the fantastic return to the winning something at least. Sorry, Stephen, it doesn't happen too often. Stephen Hingston, top of the tree. Stephen Hingston, top of the tree this week with 66 points. Narrowly pipping Tom with 57. Pete with a decent 55. Then there's a gap down to Alan and Richard with 46. 45 for Graham, 40 for Megan. And then in the lower half of the table, haven't got a clue, Darren Burns. Is the wheel coming off the wagon after two super successful years? 39 points. Onana's in pyjamas, 36, along with Carol Hansen's wishing well. This time, Son Crispin Butworth, 35. Sonny Days, Andy Pullen. Where has it all gone wrong for you, my son? Uh, pun intended. 34 points this week. Glenn Toddle, the kids. Off the bottom, 33 points. Cherry Hingston, 32. Mike Hansen, 27. And then 10 points further adrift of that. And the person we're going to have a wee bit of focus on this time. Yes, unfortunately, it's the man with single-handedly the most difficult team name to not only uh, pronounce, but also type into my spreadsheet. Thank you very much for that. With Martin, read error 404. We've all seen that on the internet. It will expand on that as... Uh, the weeks go on. Your game week rank position was 9 million. Oh dear. Average points this week was 44. 17 points for Martin. Where did it all go wrong? Well, Pickford took a little bit of a stuffing. Get zero points. Trippier, two. Tim Ream with his red card, minus two points. Perisic coming off the bench for one. Gabriel with one. Martinelli and Rashford. And somehow, inexplicably, Pascal Gross only scored one point. Yet Brighton managed to be the form team. Jensen with three. Isaac with two. And Haaland with two for just turning up and not doing a huge amount. On his bench, Dominic Solanke would have been nice to have had him on for five points. But still, that is 17 points. You get the wooden spoon this week, Martin. Congratulations to Stephen, who gets manager of the week. Um, and I'm afraid, Martin, you are now leading the way in the wooden spoon by some considerable distance. You are the target that nobody wants to beat. Um, we'll take a little look at a few of the stats, but as it's only game week two, it doesn't really uh, bear any relevance as I look over here to my other screen. Um, interestingly, top scores this week, only three managers make the top score overall list. That's three uh, scores better than last week. Uh, the manager of the week, of course, Stevens up there with Darren with two. And in terms of top scores individual, uh, this was an interesting one. Only Pete managed to actually score more points this week than any of the other managers did. Uh, Pete with 55 this week. Everyone else's top score individually is still their game week one score. Uh, low scores, of course, Martin's on there with uh, one and he's uh, quite far adrift at the bottom of the lowest uh, game week. Uh, so there we go. I'll just take a wee look-see, uh, even though it's only the second game, but the uh, Europa Conference League. Uh, obviously, there's only a few teams uh, in this league. Tom Hansen, Chris Buttle, Steve Hinkston, uh, Martin Worrell. Uh, you, Martin, you actually lost to the toddlers. Uh, remember, these are uh, children, picking children, not allowed to do anything to their team, and they scored 33 points. Um, what have we learned from that? Probably nothing. But as we look at the KSI Europa League, uh, Tom is top, two wins out of two, followed by Steve, uh, Martin and Crispin, and the kids all with one win. Very early days. That will continue for the whole of the season. Um, I won't look at the uh, KSI Champions League uh, because I'm level with you. Uh, we're just taking a wall down at home and I'm absolute cream crackered. So we'll look at that next time. It's only two weeks in. has nothing to do with the fact that I haven't won a game actually does have something to do with the fact that I haven't won a day. Uh, in reality, uh, this week, 
Uh, Tottenham continued to look oddly impressive without Harry Kane, who managed to score here a goal and get an assist in the Farmers League in Germany. Well done to him. Uh, Bristol City, oh, terrible, terrible. Our top player, Alex Scott, goes for around £20 million to Bournemouth. A uh, player that we sold last year to Bournemouth, Antoine Semeo scores against Anfield. And Bristol City don't have a single shot on target, yet I shell out somewhere north of 65 quid this week for the pleasure of that. In reality, the paper aeroplane game, uh, if anyone could see that at Ashton Gate, which took place from the uh, Section 86, where the ultras are, uh, which lasted for about 40 minutes of the first half, was far more entertaining than anything else on the pitch, leading me to this. Thank God for fantasy football, uh, where we can all escape. Good luck for game week three. Don't forget there's a game on Friday, I believe. Uh, so get your transfers in. All oh, the one thing I did want to just mention is I do take note on when we use our chips. And we've had the first person to use a chip. It is Andy Pullen. Andy Pullen uh, used his bench boost uh, in game week two. And Andy gained an extra one point. Happens to us all, Andy. I'll see you in game week three.